All right, welcome to the Hack the Box Quick Guide featuring nine of us. We see there's only some web ports open right now, so we're going to check port 80 here and see what's there. You see it's a bit of a default page. We're just going to run GoBuster on that, try to find some endpoints here. We find the department endpoint. If we go there, we see it's a login portal. And uh, we're going to go ahead and brute force the admin account here, just kind of guessing that there's an admin account. And we're just going to need to find the parameters to pass into Hydra for this brute force attack. And as you see, this invalid password exclamation point is the fail condition. We see that's what we see every time it fails. So that's what we're going to be using for our command. So running that pretty quickly, we get a password for the account. So we're going to log in with that. And that will then bring us to this page here. If I view the source on this, I can see some special notes here. And uh, it's kind of alluding to a secret folder as well as a DB interface. So this is a bit of a hint for what's to come. So if we check out the HTTPS version of the site, we'll notice that it is in fact different. And we're gonna run GoBuster on that as well. And there you go, you see a DB endpoint and a secure underscore notes endpoint as well. So if we go to secure notes, uh, it seems like it's just a harmless image, but if we actually pull that down, there might be something embedded in an image. This is a pretty classic uh, CTF type of thing that you would encounter. We're going to do it with the dash dash no certificate flag because we got to tell wget to ignore SSL. So we do that, we pull down the file, we're actually going to run binwalk on it to extract anything that might be in the file. So we can just run binwalk like this and then we'll run it with the dash me flag to tell it to get anything embedded in the image. So it got a number of things. If we look at the output here, we actually see uh, both a, uh, you know, we see the secret folder in here and then within that we see both a public and private key. If we inspect the public key, we'll see that this key corresponds to the Amroyce user. So let's try to go ahead and SSH using that private key. But before we do that, we're going to need to make it, uh, we're going to need the chmod 600 to make it usable as a SSH private key. So we'll do that and uh, then we'll go ahead and try and SSH into the box with that. But it will hang though, because if you recall, port 22 SSH was not running on the box. So it looks like there could be some firewall in place or something. We'll ignore that for now. Let's check out the notes endpoint back on the HTTP version of the site. And we're gonna try an LFI in this notes parameter in the URL here, Etsy password. That will actually error. It says no note is selected. So basically what I determine is, is grepping for some kind of notes. So we put nine of the notes in, it works. And now we're gonna look at knock D because there might be some port knocking involved. This is kind of a shot in the dark. There's multiple ways to do this box, but you can keep following all these files here until eventually you get to the configuration file and you'll see what the sequence is to open SSH. Basically this is going to add the, remove the IP tables rule that was blocking SSH. So we're gonna run through with a for loop to do it in a certain order to port knock. And now when we scan 22, we see it's open so we can now SSH into the box. The other way to do this box is to exploit PHP Lite admin. We gotta brute force a password for that first though. But I'm gonna go ahead and upload some privilege escalation, some linpees to see what I can find. When I ran it, I found that there was a new directory slash reports from the root directory that was available. And basically every file in that was being written to every minute or so. So there is a cron tab. There's some kind of cron job at play here, but I didn't see anything in the cron tab. It must be a hidden cron job running. So I'm going to upload this pspy thing so I can look at the processes. This is a new program that I recently got. And I kept saying ch rootkit, you know, check rootkit. And so this is actually a piece of software. If I run search for it, we see a uh, vulnerability in here where we anything we write to update temp update will get run by the root account so i'm going to write a file called update in the temp directory and uh, just have it spawn a shell and i'll make it executable and now i just sit here and wait for it to connect back to our listener and now we see it did connect back and if i run who am i we have now rooted the box